Throughout the developing world, immense tracts of farmland, grazing lands and forests have become degraded to the point that they are no longer productive and this deforestation continues at an alarming rate. Degraded land has an extremely detrimental effect on the lives of farmers who depend on it for their food and livelihoods. Subsistence farmers often make up to 70 to 80% of the population in these regions and they regularly suffer from hunger, malnutrition and even famine as a consequence. In Timor-Leste, deforestation is occurring at an alarming rate the latest data suggests over 19% of forests and woodland areas have been lost in the last 14 years alone. Natural resources expert Tony Renaudo is very concerned. So um, when, when trees and forests are cut down, one of the reasons why they don't regenerate on their own is because uh, there's a culture of burning the bush every year here in East Timor. And so the, the seeds are destroyed, uh, new growth is burnt, and even, even the grasses are destroyed. And so it's self-defeating. They're, they're burning in order to get green feed for their animals. And over time, you not only lose the valuable grass species, but uh, we're losing soil on, on this steep slope and the heavy rains that we have here in uh, East Timor. The organic matter, the seed, and, and the topsoil just washes off. When the rains are not able to soak into the earth, they create erosion and landslides. And, and so if you look directly behind me, a, a massive landslips occurred there. Just to the left of the landslide, um, the landscape has been burnt and there's been heavy cutting of trees, heavy deforestation. So there's nothing left to hold the soil and to allow the, the heavy rainfall that we have in this district to, to take that time to soak in. And instead it runs off, it, it gathers speed and, um, uh, and, and power and it has very erosive force. Farmer Manuel de Silva knows only too well the importance of looking after the forests. <laughs> Like Manuel, his forefathers have recognised the importance of looking after the forest, having a law to protect it. Could <laughs> Five years ago, Manuel began reforesting his land by pruning back the regrowth on stumps of old trees that had once been cut down. He was concerned about the backburning practices going on in his community, causing erosion, landslides, and threatening to dry up the natural mountain springs. For the past 30 years, Tony Renaudo has been encouraging farmers all over the developing world to do the exact same thing, as a part of a technique he calls Farmer Managed Natural Regeneration, or FMNR. So this method costs nothing at all, as people have earned more and more income from the sale of the wood, they're leaving more and more stems to regrow. And in fact, we say that every stem you leave gives you a profit. And now, Tony has returned to ALU to speak to a new group of farmers about FMNR. 
So just, just a little uh, revision. This is what Niger looked like in 1980 when I went there. Much deforestation and as a consequence, uh, drought and pests and hunger and poverty and many people had to leave their homes. At that time, I worked very, very hard to restore the environment. And we planted many species of trees. And we used the best techniques that uh, were known. It, it was a total failure, the trees died. And uh, I was very frustrated. I, I wasn't achieving anything. And I was ready to give up and go home to Australia. But I, I, felt, I felt that this is, this is where I was meant to be. I was meant to be doing this work. And so I, I prayed for help, for God to help. And I said, forgive us for destroying your, your creation, the gift of your creation. As a result, people are hungry and poor. But you still love us. Help us. Open our eyes. Show us what to do. And it's very interesting, I had been traveling on this road for three years. My eyes were open, but I was blind because I, I had not seen what, what was there all the time. It, it looks like desert, but there's trees everywhere. They're underground. I, I call it the underground forest. We, we would understand there's as much tree under the ground with roots as there is above the ground with branches. And when, when we cut the tree down, most trees don't die. There's still half of the tree alive. With deep, strong roots, they can access water and nutrients. And if we give it the opportunity, it will grow back very, very quickly. And I think this is not new for East Timor. When you cut bamboo, it regrows. When you cut certain trees, eucalyptus, other trees, you cut them, they regrow. It's not a foreign idea. It's been practiced here for many generations. In 2011, World Vision Timor-Leste started a partnership called BRACE, Building Resilience Against Climate Change and the Environment with communities in the ALU district. When Tony discovered that Manuel had been practicing all along, he suggested he become a model farmer for his community. So we're in, we're in Aliu district at um, Manuel de Silva's farm, and we're running an FMNR workshop. And right here, the participants are doing a practical session on the pruning. Okay, so we've got several tree stumps here that are very close together and they've sent up a number of shoots that are, are competing with each other for nutrients and for light. And what we're going to do, you can see, you can see one of the stems, one of the original stems here where it's been cut. So what, what we're going to do is reduce the number of stems and prune some of the side branches so that we can get a, a taller, a straighter uh, tree that will grow faster. So just cutting down some of the um, competition and some of the side branches so it will grow straighter and taller. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. That's, that's probably enough for this area and we can always come back in the future when these are bigger and the competition has increased again. We'll leave the tallest ones and perhaps Cut, cut out the smaller one, maybe for tomato steaks or for bean pole, or, or if they're a little bit bigger for some firewood. But maybe in, in this case, our ultimate objective is to grow taller poles so that we can build a house or for some form of construction. So we've, we've watched the slides, we've heard the talks, but now this is hands-on, and I'm, I'm asking that everybody has a turn so that they can experience just how simple and how quick the method is and, and they, they can go away confident that um, they, they can start practicing this immediately when they get home, they can even teach others. Through restoring degraded farmlands and forests, FMNR can double or even triple crop yields and guards against crop loss due to extreme weather events. It provides much needed firewood and building timber which leads to diversified farm incomes halts wind and water erosion, increases soil fertility and organic matter, 
increases the water table, sees the return of dried up springs, and it provides shade and fodder for cattle, increasing their condition and value. Studies show that in Niger, farmers practicing FMNR in its most sophisticated form can increase their incomes fivefold. In Niger, the result was dramatic, it was amazing. In 1980, this is what Niger looked like. In just the first six months, they stopped burning, they managed the livestock, and they stopped cutting for, for firewood. In six months, the trees are coming back, they're one I metre tall. Minute. Because they stopped burning, there's now straw from the crop, and it's like a blanket protecting the soil. So there's more moisture, and the soil is becoming more fertile. This is one year later, and this is three years later. So here's a question. This soil is very infertile, it's sand, pure sand. Here you have clay, heavy soil. Here, here we have 300, 400 millimeters of rain in, in Niger. In East Timor, you have more than a thousand millimeters. So he, here's the question. If in Niger this is possible in three years, what's possible in East Timor? What's possible here? In the past three years, in the shallow soils and dry hills, trees have grown about three to four metres and the bushy shrubs that existed in some of the best locations have transformed into six metre tall trees. However, success can't continue unless everyone works together, plans, consults and dreams big. The community has been so successful that in April this year they will get the opportunity to demonstrate the benefits of FMNR to other communities, organisations and the government when they host Timor Lester's inaugural Farmer Managed Natural Regeneration Conference. For more information on FMNR, visit fmnrhub.com.au.